Hello furniture friends, Katie here from Salvaged by K. Scott with a pretty impressive trash to treasure furniture makeover, if I do say so myself. Last week I showed you how I found this set of nightstands out of the curb in someone's trash and gave you a few tips to check out if you are trying to get the stink out of some old furniture. But this week I am actually getting down to work and undertaking a massive transformation on this set so that I can use them in our new basement guest suite. This pair is mostly a laminate veneer over particle board, which is peeling off all over the place. They were absolutely filthy inside and out with a very strong cigarette smell and full of mouse poop. So I ended up taking them apart and giving them a really thorough scrub down. And then I primed the inside and outside of the drawers with some shellac based primer to really seal in any of the residual odor. Now I want to make some modifications to the bodies to give these an entirely new identity. I started by flipping them over and unscrewing the bases. This part is actually solid wood, but I'm going to be building my own new bases a little later on. And I was very pleased that the bottom structure of these nightstands is also solid wood. So I've got some really good material to attach my new idea to. To help modernize these boxes, I wanted to remove the overhang and make the sides flush. So I grabbed a straight edge and marked off where I wanted to cut. And then I grabbed my circular saw and ran it down as close to the side edge as I could. My cuts were definitely not precise. I am not good with the power saws, but I was able to grind any excess down flat with my orbital sander and some 80 grit sandpaper. Next, because these are particle board and I now have a bunch of that exposed, I mixed up some heavy duty two part wood filler so that I could fill in that particle board texture and make them just as smooth as the laminate on the rest of the surfaces. This filler is an epoxy and it has a really strong smell. So I like to wear my respirator when I'm working with it. It also starts to harden up and cure really quickly once you mix the two parts together. So I only mix up a little batch at a time and try and work as fast as I can. I also want to fill in all of these drawer details and make myself a nice smooth surface so I filled those in as well. Once all that filler was dry I used some more 80 grit sandpaper to start smoothing it out. I did need to mix up another batch and do a second pass on the drawers, which is really common when you're filling large areas like this, just to get any air pockets or bubbles that you missed on your first pass. So I did that and then sanded everything flush once it was all dry. After I was done with my second pass at the drawers, I realized that I needed to cut the front lip off of these as well. And Doug already had the table saw out for his own project. So he offered to zip the nightstands through there for me. And I'm never going to decline an opportunity to not have to use a saw. Now that I had everything cut down and smoothed out, I was ready to prime. I used my usual bin shellac based primer with a four inch lint free roller and covered the drawer fronts and the bodies of the nightstands in two coats of primer. And because of that really strong smoke odor, I needed to prime all of the inside surfaces as well. As 
as my primer dried, I got myself ready to move on to the new legs that I had stuck in my brain. I am not good at this sort of stuff. So I sketched out what I wanted to do first and then picked up a few one by two by eight pieces of poplar from Home Depot. I used our chop saw to cut all of the links that I needed. And then I used my little Craig jig pocket hole system to attach all of the pieces together in a way that should hide the screws from view. And I'll say it again, I am not good at this kind of stuff. So it was definitely a very fiddly process that took some trial and error with my clamps and shims and a lot of swearing to get these pieces attached together into a rectangle, but I made it happen. Because of the way that I want to screw these to the bottom of the tables once they're finished, I needed to drill some holes with a countersink bit before I attached the top of my rectangle structure. And I'll show you how all of that works coming up in a bit. Once I had all of the new legs assembled, I gave them a quick sand with some 220 grit and then stained them all in Bear's water-based wood stain in the color Early American. painting these in Fusion Mineral Paints Victorian Lace, which is a gorgeous bright white and will be a great neutral moment in the bedroom, which I'm planning on putting lots of colorful accents in. I loaded up my Wagner Flexio 590 with the paint and Fusion is already a great viscosity to spray, so I didn't add any water to it like I do with a lot of the other paints that I use. I did a little test spray down on my drop cloth to make sure that everything was flowing nicely and then sprayed my first coat onto the nightstands upside down so that I could get into all of the hard to reach spots. Then I called it quits for the day. The next morning I flipped my tables over and sprayed on two more coats of paint to the boxes and the drawer fronts, leaving about two hours in between coats.
has a built-in top coat that is super durable once the paint is cured. So I decided to skip adding any additional top coat for now, but I may come back a little while later and add a few coats of Fusion's Matte Tough Coat once I'm ready to put these in their new home because nightstand tops get a lot of traffic. While my paint was drying, I had a few other things that I needed to work on for these. I found these four rectangular pulls in my stash that I saved off of another piece of furniture. So I cleaned them off and gave them a quick spray to even out the color. I also need to seal up my new wooden legs before I attach them to my piece and I decided to use up the rest of this can of Wise Owl's Furniture Salve in the scent Righteous Rain. This is a hemp oil and wax product that you really just rub onto the wood, let it soak in for a few minutes and then I came back with a shop towel and wiped away the excess. Once my paint was nice and dry, I was ready to flip the nightstands over again and attach my new legs. So I put down a soft blanket so I didn't scratch up my new paint job and then got to work. This again was a little bit of a fiddly, tedious process, but here's how it went. I've got some screws and because of the way that I've constructed these, I can't just screw them in with a drill or a regular screwdriver. So I set my screws into those holes that I pre-drilled, added a tiny drill bit, and then used a ratcheting wrench to screw those down far enough that I could use a 90 degree drill attachment to screw them in, drive them in the rest of the way into the base. To figure out the placement of my new hardware in the center of the drawers, I put down a little piece of painter's tape and then used a straight edge again and just went corner to corner to find the center point. Once I figured out where the center of the drawer was, I'm not gonna lie, I eyeballed it from there and just used a pen to mark off where I needed to drill my new holes. curbside state that I started with and I'm really excited to start pulling together the rest of our guest suite with more found furniture but since I am working with what I find when I happen to find it that might take a little bit of time so please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so you never miss out on a new furniture project and I will catch you all next time